Hey, David Raffoff here. Just doing a quick video on my uh, Unix setup on a Windows machine. I'm just going to run you through what that looks like real quick. So um, <clears throat> you may be familiar with this. I wasn't. There's a tool called, um, there's a setup called the WSL on Windows, which is the Windows subsystem for Linux. And uh, what that does is it lets you actually run uh, like Ubuntu on Windows and this isn't an isolated uh, OS, like it, it integrates with Windows. So uh, for me, like most of the work that I do professionally, I do on Unix or Linux systems. Um, but I like having a win uh, I like having a PC running Windows because Apple has gotten so restrictive with um, not being able to update your hardware. Uh, like I just, I always want to be able to swap out parts on my computers and um, adjust them over time. Uh, adding more RAM or space or whatever. So, uh, but one of the things that I was really missing, um, having been working mostly on Apple machines, is having access to like a real version of uh, Linux, but that's fully integrated, you know, mostly integrated with the rest of the computer. It's not just like an isolated thing like a, like a virtual machine would be. So yeah, before this, I was pretty much just using uh, virtual machines to do any uh, Unix-based stuff on my Windows PC. And for the most part, it works pretty well, but it does, there are some things about it that are annoying, like it's just one step removed, it's a little bit slower. I was having to make updates for it and my uh, normal like desktop, or normal environment in Windows. So anyway, I'd heard about this, I thought I'd just give it a shot. So as you can see here, um, I'm actually on uh, Windows right now, Windows 10 but I have open uh, a terminal window here. I'm, I'm using a terminal called Hyper. Uh, that's actually like, I think a web browser based or something. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. Uh, but basically you can see here, I've got my uh, Linux setup. It's like an Ubuntu installation. Uh, it's like the official thing that you use with WSL. And it really doesn't take a lot to set this up. I'll, I'll post the link in the description for how to get started with this, but um, really all you have to do is install a few things and um, it'll, you'll, I think you'll get bash like out of the box is the uh, shell that you're gonna use. But if you wanna spend a little time tweaking it, like I've done, uh, I use uh, Z shell and like a power line um, uh, setup a theme that has, that uses power line to give you some nice, some little niceties. Like you can see down here, the, uh, prompt is a little bit uh, customized. Uh, if we hop over to this tab too, you can see like it's, I'm getting some nice colors and uh, icons and stuff in here. Uh, it's not perfect. There are some things about it that uh, still need some work. Like you can tell, I've tried a few different versions of the power line fonts and you can see like, I'm still getting like weird gaps and stuff between the symbols. So there's like slight, may not be coming across well in the video, but like very, slight like one pixel lines between some of these things really minor stuff uh, i mean all the all the major things you would want uh from uh having linux on your system work uh with this installed so that's the main thing uh the only thing that's a little weird is there are some permission issues so i think just for me the mental model is they really want you to um for the most part, if you're going to work in um, Linux or in this Ubuntu setup in WSL, like you probably want to start by completely installing your projects uh, in in this environment and not just like opening up what you have in the Windows uh, environment to edit. So there are a couple odd things with that. Um, for, so for your, like, for example, if you're using VS Code, you can't just... Uh, like edit this project directly with code. So if I try to do that, you're just gonna see like a bunch of blank files, like it doesn't know what this is. And I think that's just um, permissioning stuff. It doesn't want Windows updating this area and vice versa. <clears throat> uh, so what you have to do is you have to install Code Insiders and that I think basically sp spins up a server that will give you access to the stuff from the Windows side. So I could do this, set up Code Insiders. It'll take it a minute to 
spin up. You'll see too, I think it auto updates itself here. Uh, give it a second. But yeah, basically you can still, um, you can use an editor that's Windows based to make all your changes on the Linux side, which is pretty awesome. And you can see here, it's taking a second for it to pop up, but you can see it's pulling up all these files here, no problem. Um, and yeah, I mean, overall, uh, I feel like this setup works pretty well. I think I've probably, you can get the basic thing going in probably a couple hours. Um, I've probably spent a day just customizing my environment to fit how I normally work a little bit better. But um, I think the big, the big things to get in place are just setting up WSL, getting um, Ubuntu installed, which is part of that process. Um, if you use uh, code or VS Code, uh, you'll probably want to do this uh, Code Insiders installation so you can edit from the Unix or Linux side. Um, and then really just install whatever tools you normally use. Like if you, uh, I can't remember if it comes, if the Ubuntu installation comes with like Git and all that kind of stuff installed. So you may have to spend a little bit of time uh, installing some of those packages, but uh, none of that's uh, been too bad. So yeah, I think probably, you know, if you have half a day, you could get started on this. And then in another half a day, you could probably get the, the basic uh, customization that you want in um, pretty easily. But yeah, on the whole, I've been really happy with this. Um, I still have my virtual machine with everything installed on it. I'm probably gonna wipe it out. I've been using this for two weeks, two or three weeks now, and I've uh, been pretty happy with it. So um, I don't think I'll go back to using the virtual machine that I have in place for this. You can see too, like I'm, I mean all the, this is an Angular app that I'm doing here. I can do ng-serve and it'll fire that up and everything will work as expected there. Um, but yeah, just having this all in one place to me is, is super nice. Like, uh, you want, there will be some things that are not, uh, there's still some places where the integration can use some work, but I know that they're actively, um, trying to improve it. Just little things like cutting and pasting. Um, the shortcuts are slightly different. Uh, I think instead of doing just like a control V, you have to do like a shift control V to paste into, uh, uh, the, the Linux side here. Um, so yeah, I don't know. There's, there's just a couple of little odd things here and there. It's not perfect, but, uh, to me, the trade-off is, uh, it's certainly nicer than having to maintain like an, an entirely separate virtual machine to do whatever it is you want to do. Yeah. So here we go. You can see, uh, that's up and running fine. No problems. Uh, hold on. Let's see if I, I'll just show you that running here real quick. Give me a second. Uh, da, da, da. yeah, so you can see here, this is at that, um, address. So yeah, that's all working pretty well. Uh, you can see here to just pull this up for a second. This is the, um, the official Microsoft documentation for, uh, getting started with this. And there's really not a whole lot you have to do. Um, you basically have to enable the feature. Um, I think you have to restart after you do that for probably permissioning, uh, related reasons. And then you just install Unix. Uh, I think it's, I get, I don't know. You might be able to install whatever you want, but I think Ubuntu is the one you can get really easily through the, uh, when the Microsoft store. Yeah. It looks like you got options for whatever you want to use. Um, which is pretty cool. Didn't realize that. And then, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. Um, like I said, that'll, that'll just get you started. Like you'll probably want to do a bunch of customization along the way. Um, so let me switch back. I'm just going to stop this. You can see too, you do have access to files on the, um, window side. So like here I made a link to my desktop. Um, so if I wanted to, I could just go, oh, hold on could just pop over to my desktop. Um, and right now I don't have anything. I think I could probably add something here. Let me see. Let me just make a fake file here or make a, let me just make a throwaway file, um, test.txt or something. Yeah. You can't see it on the window here, but let me, 
hold on a second. Let's see if this will come on top of, ah, there it goes. Yep, so you can see here, this made a, a test.txt file on my Windows desktop. Um, so yeah, I mean, there's, it's not, the integration, like I said, it's not 100%, but there's enough integration there that it lets you do a lot of the basic stuff. Um, you know, like sometimes I want to download stuff through Windows, uh, through my browser and just bring, copy it over to the Linux side. So um, having access to all, all the uh, files on the Windows side is definitely nice. Um, so yeah, if, uh, if you're still using a virtual machine or if, uh, you know, you're using Apple, uh, reluctantly because you, you know, cause it has that nice integration with, uh, uh, Linux or Unix, uh, there, I recommend, uh, you know, giving this a shot. It's not that hard to do. Um, I'll probably do some more customization on this. And if I do, I'll, um, share some videos on that, but just wanted to share the basics here with you. So yeah, thanks for watching this. And uh, let me know in the comments too, if there are uh, topics or, um, you know, topics you'd like to know more about, or if you have questions about this, um, always looking for ideas for uh, videos, the, the best, um, you know, I, I always have things I want to cover, but really I want to know what's interesting to you. Uh, and the only way I can know is if you either hit me up on uh, Twitter or leave comments on the videos. So please, if you have questions or uh, things you'd like me to explore more in videos, uh, just drop a comment or hit me up on Twitter. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.